Rugby is brought to you by the City of Tequila. The City of Tequila is proud to support and be home to the Seattle Seawolves at Starfire Sports. Champions call Tequila home. And Wing Dome. We keep our priorities straight at the Wing Dome. The wings are served hot, brew ice cold, and the game is always on. To order online, visit thewingdome.com. Beautiful evening here at Starfire Sports Stadium. And we have the Seattle lineups first with Kevin Swearen. Yeah, Mark, really looking forward to this uh, matchup today. Michael Shepard coming at a hooker. Big work rate this season. See if he can get it together in the lineouts with his teammates. And Nakai Penny, the absolute MVP for the Seawolves to start off the season. And they got so much firepower in the backs, but it's the Tiberio Turner connection that I'm looking for with Tibbs literally coming off the construction yard in his work boots to warm up until he could get his rugby cleats back on. Let's see, let's see what they can do. And for Utah, head coach Chris Latham has made six changes to the lineup after last week's loss to Colorado. John Cullen returns to the pack and is given the captain's armband. And look out for Arrowa Elkington making his first start for this season as well. In the backs, Josh Whippy is recalled into his less preferred position of wing, while his preferred fullback spot is filled by the Fijian seven star Pat Revovo. And the man in the middle for tonight, the Frenchy, Henrique Plate. And we are moments away from kickoff here in Washington, Seattle. It's round five of the Major League Rugby competition. The hosts, the Seawolves and defending champions take on the Utah Warriors in this all Western Conference clash. I'm Mark Stabina, joined by USA Rugby legend, Kevin Swearen. And it's the Warriors being asked to come out of their own 22. Clearing kick doesn't find touch, so here is a counterattack from the Seawolves. Up over the halfway into Warrior territory. Putting it through the hands, through the middle, strong tackle from Fisher. Ben Sima to Suniula off the left foot. Gets the crowd on their feet. Up to the 22 now, the Seawolves, and a penalty to boot. So a good start to the Seawolves. That's right, Mark. That was really nice uh, movement of the ball by Seattle. You want to see the possession, you know, the quick ball. One, two, three, four phases, just like, just like they needed to on the counterattack. Uh, when, when you see that ball get kicked over, Seattle's thinking you know, one phase, two phase, three phase as their counterattack, not just that initial kick. So really good job by them uh, to have this attacking platform inside the 22, 10 meters out from the try line. Let's see what this Seattle line out can do. As Kevin mentioned, 10 meters out, prime attacking position as they opt for the drive. A roar from the crowd as they advance toward the Warriors try line. Still going. Finally, the ball comes down and it's brought down illegally, so it's a penalty. They'll have another crack. Number eight, suicide. Yeah, Mark, that was a great little line out there. They earned another penalty. Their keys to victory today, eliminate the gaps defensively. They've been shooting up and get, opening up things for the, the, the attacking okay. teams. Hold onto the ball, play with the ball. That's part of the rugby is you want, you need to earn the right to play with the ball. And the third and final key, you know, kick and chase sparingly. You got to kick and chase and use it sparingly today. Time off call by the referee. Just attending to a Warriors player. And that was a great first start, right? I mean, line out to the back, get that rolling mall, that, that big tight mall going, and they, they kept it in. Uh, they didn't get frantic, and they set it up perfectly. The forwards got the push on. Utah player fell underneath their legs. The, that earned them another penalty. I mean, the, the, the key to victory, right, is going to be the, the set pieces, the lineouts for Seattle. Can they win? They, they had a 78% win ratio of their own lineouts the first four matches. Well, they looked to have improved already as they have another attempt at driving. 
It's brought down. One metre out from the try line. Seattle pressing in this early exchange. Still short of the line. As Tucker comes around, he's told to stand in place. Pick and drive. Is he over? Looking to go again. It's Tucker at the back. Put down by this solid defense from Utah as the chance come from the stadium. Waiting now, JP Smith, and it's over! First try of the match to Seattle. The crowd love it. It was a bash and barge effort. And it all started from the pressure from the penalty and then some very strong line out work that you talked about, Kevin Swearing. Well, and great patience, Mark. Oh, my gosh. I mean, they're, they're sitting there taking one, two, three seconds at the ruck to make sure they're set up. They, they were patient. They got the two, three guys just three meters off the ruck, feet on the ball, and then when they got the quick opportunity, they went, and then they slowed it down. There were two or three moments there played perfectly by Seattle. They split both sides of the ruck, and they set up two different uh, forward pods, and they could go left or right, and that split Utah's defense a little bit, and Mike Shepard came jamming in, my player to watch, Mark, and he gets a first try of the match here today. So, Ben Seema adds the extras. And the Seawolves, the hosts, have taken an early lead over the Warriors, who are coming off a narrow loss to Colorado last week. A little knock-on to Seattle first before the Utah knock-on. So finally, the Warriors with an opportunity deep in Seawolves territory. Mark. And and just what you don't want to do as Seattle, right, is, is you've just put together a perfect sequence of play to get a try within five minutes of the start of the match. And so the next job, your next job is kick off, receive, Get the ball in nice. hand, get it out of your territory. Well, they turn it over, and now Utah's got that opportunity to come in inside the 22, scrum, you know, Good. gaps opening up for their back. So uh, let's see what they do with the ball here. That's right, Kev. It's, it's quite often a psychological potential banana skin to slip on, isn't it? When you score points to then take the foot off the pedal, you know the opposition is going to come back twice as hard, and as you just mentioned there. Just a little lapse in concentration that's given Utah this opportunity now. That's right, Mark. And and really, it's it's the timing of mistakes. Because some mis you're going to have mistakes in a match, but it's the timing. This that's the, the the kickoff receive is such a bad time to make a mistake. Similarly, if they kicked it into touch, that would have been such a bad time for Utah to make that mistake. And Seattle do their best to shove what Utah off the ball. They've maintained it as Gannon Moore comes flying in to help. Dragged over the sideline. He believes he wasn't released. The referee's going to have a chat with the assistant referee on the sideline. Is it? Is it? What is? They're just having a little chat. Was that legal? Could the player drag him into touch like that? The tackler. So the tackler released or didn't release. Well, you so mentioned the Seattle keys against. to victory. Utah, they did a great job of disrupting Austin's struggling line out in round three, and there may be some opportunities tonight. They're driving more as a strength, but at times it doesn't get the intended result, so they need to convert those. And they love to race up quickly in defense, as you'll see, but they also need to adjust if Seattle find their way around it. And that was a penalty on Seattle for not releasing the player when tackled. That player was down, his knees were down. And so maybe a yard you could have dragged him, but not three or four meters. And so they called the penalty Utah's line out here. And the Warriors now clean take in the back of the line out and they drive. Just mentioned the key to victory is to make sure these drives amount to something, whether they give the backs a good platform and it looks like they have. The Warriors now on the charge, bringing plenty of numbers around the corner. Picking and driving with patience. That's a great run. Scurrying all the way up to nearly the five meter line. Now they're within five meters of the Seawolves. Try line. Holding firm is the Seawall. Vandenberg. Basker looks left, ops right. It's a wide pass. 
now looking to go the same way again. Playing some simple rugby. Other Warriors, plenty of patience. Little slip pass and out the back, that looks like a try. Did he get it down? Just have a little check with his uh, assistant referee on the side. Okay, clear. Did he get it down? No, he didn't. We saw it from up here, Kevin. They did some great work. Yeah, Mark, it was a tricky little offload. He had a man wrapped around him. He flings it out the back and, yep, knock on. So Whippy on the edge there just couldn't keep it. You could see him reaching, grasping for that ball, and it's just a, a bit unlucky there. You don't know. I mean, there was some rain, you know, earlier today on the field, how wet it is out there, and that ball was feeling a little slick when we were out there in warm-ups. So he, he probably won't do that again today. He's a, he's a solid, solid player and probably feeling hard done by, on, uh, you know, uh, about that one. So a short arm penalty now. Utah Warriors surely giving up a golden opportunity to equalize. And now they find themselves on the end of a penalty with Ben Seema stepping up. And he's got a golden boot. Oh, under pressure there. Yeah, you saw the Utah player there, uh, John Colin, charging the kick because it was a short arm penalty. It wasn't a long arm penalty. And John Colin uh, very astutely chasing, uh, charging down the, the kicker there. He's legally able to do that once he takes his motion as a kicker forward. It's a good synopsis of the laws there because Ben Seema threw his arms out in protest, didn't he? He's now the Warriors. Driving forward yet again. Ball looks loose. It was lost forward. So the Seawolves come up with it. And Seema drops it onto the right foot. He's not happy with that one. Yeah, I wouldn't be either, Mark. He probably was trying to get that infield. Nobody's back there. They're transitioning from attack to defense. Utah is. And so on the counterattack, you want to drive that ball as far down the field as you can. Get his two, two or three players to chase and so they can put pressure on Utah, but just slipped off the side of his foot. No big deal there, and, and they're on defense. Seattle is. So the Warriors still with some decent territory here. They win the line out, and they opt this time to hit the gain line through. Calvin Whiting gets it up over the 22 of Seattle. Wide passing now from the Warriors. All the way out, little clever kick off the left foot, goes back, and who's on the spot but J.P. Smith to clean up and relieve some pressure, but still the Warriors with a good opportunity. Great pressure by Utah. I love, I love what they're doing now, and they're putting things behind. They're, they're pushing, they're pushing the tempo. So a nice little kick here, and you see, they could have kept ball in hand, but they put so much pressure on Seattle. They've got a line out now on the five, six, seven meter line. So that's just as good as running and taking the ball up. And so they're, they're going to use their mall again here, Mark, just like you talked about. See what they can put through. Strong maul, as we've mentioned, but quite often falls short of its intended target. They need to convert this pressure that they apply with the maul as they drive forward. They're getting close to the line, and now they over there are. Oh, the referee is on the spot. It's a try to the Warriors. And there's a hush over this Starfire Sports Stadium crowd. You called it, Mark. It was... Are they going to take advantage of their line-out malls? And they just did that. They got stuffed two, two times earlier this match. But look how tight they stayed just with their two, three guys. Seattle needs to work back around. And then look at, look at Josh Whippy get in there. The wing pushing, pushing, just a little nudge and, uh, and try time. It was, uh, it was a really good effort. They put a, a sustained amount of pressure on Seattle down inside their 22, six, seven minutes, and uh, it, it, it worked out for them very well. And that all led back to the knock-on from the kickoff that put them under that pressure. So Seattle had a couple opportunities to get themselves out of it, but really it was Utah and their, their pressure and their attack that allowed that try to happen. That's a good point, Kevin Swearin. Hopefully a lesson learned for Seattle from the kickoff after scoring okay, is okay. make sure not to just give up easy possession, easy territory as they did. And Utah capitalized. They've been camped down here for a good six or seven minutes as the 
attempt for the conversion is un it's successful. So seven points to seven here at Starfire Sports. And this Utah Warriors team, you know they're not going to lay down. They've come off a loss. They're looking for a backlash. Seattle need to be careful. Yeah, and equally important right here is, you know, a deep kick into their territory. Uh, Utah wants to get that ball out. Seattle wants to put the pressure on and, uh, you know, and, and get back onto the front foot, get back onto attack. So Seema puts it high, wide, and somewhat long, forcing Utah to come out of their red zone. Straight back in the pocket. And the kick under pressure is long and still in field. So let's see what the Seattle counterattack can produce. Seema sprinting it out to Tiberio, dancing his way back in to support. Big hits out there. Sears Duru filling that one. Smith digs out to Seema. Dummy on the inside and then fires it out. Two-man tackle on the big man, Tucker. Seema with a deft touch in behind the defense. That's a wobbly one out to Revovo as he sees some space. The ball props up for Turner. Turner comes in. He's met. He does well. Stays on his feet extremely well, Matt Turner. And buys enough time for his support players to come. And salvage possession. Tucker again. Originally fell the wrong way and does well. But the ball's out. The referee says play on. So the Warriors on a silver platter for them on that occasion. Let's see what they can do. Showed some patience already with ball in hand at the moment. Looking to build some more phases. They have some numbers out there. Basker comes in. Through the hands of Povey. Stepping in for the injured Hagen Schulte. Taking it to the line well. Now the Warriors. Not much advancement, but building, building the pressure. And that was Wilson doing well. Still with the ball, the Warriors. The Seattle defense, known as the Seawall, holding strong. Warriors looking to break the damn wall. Not quite getting through. Brilliant display thus far from the Seawall, showing immense patience, as are the Warriors with ball in hand. Same way, Povey, dummies. Straight into a blue and green brick. Physical stuff here at Starfire Sports Stadium. Some big shots on both teams. Well, we're definitely into double figures of phases here for the Warriors. They have an advance and finally just over the tackle line up to the 22. Recycling well and quickly inside pass. Revovo coming in, beats a couple. Ball goes to ground, still alive for the Warriors. One off the ruck on that occasion. And it's a penalty to the Seattle Seawolves. Kevin Swearing, what about that <laughs> defensive stand? Wow, what patience from both teams. I mean, Utah started with the ball at the 50, and they were going back at times, and they came up and back, and that had to be in close to a 20-phase sequence, and which is incredible, by the way, and, and, and impressive by Utah to be able to – keep ball not even get close seattle's not even had a chance to take the ball at any of those rucks they are very impressed by that attack but even more impressed right by the defensive uh, uh, pressure and patience by seattle um bo both teams what a stalemate that was brilliant rugby from both teams and now basket cleaning up at the back over the 22, so the Warriors again with possession and territory. Driving forward, coming back the other way. That's a good run. 
And it's intercepted. Just tripping up on himself, Tabira, but gets to his feet quickly, still going. Just the relief that the Seawolves needed as Seema claps for the ball. He has some numbers. Suniula, dummies. And he's lost it. It's gone forward off Utah, so the Seawolves will regain possession. And those red jerseys advancing quickly in defense. <laughs> Come back for the original knock. Wow, that was a timely turnover there for the Seawolves. Yeah, timely turnover turnover indeed. And and uh, really read well by Tiberio. He just steps it off his left foot to pick that ball off. Maybe could have gone the distance. I don't know if his legs would have been able to allow him to get all the way there, but could have definitely picked up some more meters. Love to see him cut back inside, get close to his teammates, because if he took off, he, it could have been a quick, easy turnover. So he cuts back inside, gets some more support, and uh, they're able to maintain that ball. And then we're, you know, we're sitting here at the scrum now uh, from the knock-on on Utah. But, uh, you know, what really, what really hurts Seattle in those situations is, is the loss of that line out and having to play so much defense in their end, you know, get the turnover, get to the line out, and then lose it and go back on defense is really tough. So they're fortunate to have quickly turned that right back over and now have the ball here uh, just inside their, just inside their uh, territory. But it's been, I mean, the first five minutes, Mark, it was all it was all Seattle. Try, looking good. But, I mean, since then, Utah has literally played only in, in Seattle's half. And uh, it's not sustainable. It's really not to be, to be feeling that much pressure. That's right, Kevin. So perhaps now the Seawolves sitting up and taking notice of their opponents and just what they are up against in this game. Seven points all, Gannon Moore. Almost getting around the outside. He does. He just shrugs off Tiberio. He's been a revelation this season. Another intercept from the Seawolves. Bringing the crowd to their feet again. But it's turned over illegally. It'll come back. Penalty to Seattle. Well, you're seeing a lot of penalties uh, quickly on Utah here. And, and both teams actually have a huge penalty count over the season and tied for 11th in the league. But what a what a read by Ricard. It looks like from the defensive line, he already sees that player calling for the ball. So he goes straight for him, you know, knowing that it's gonna be a quick pass to get it there. And uh, he just beelines for it. And it's, a, it's a great, smart, intuitive play by the, the number eight, Ricard Hetting. Players are going to take a little hydration break here at Starfire Sports Stadium. Don't go anywhere, folks. We'll be back for second quarter action in just a moment. Welcome back to Starfire Stadium, where we are in a tie match between the Utah Warriors and the Seattle Seawolves. And I can tell you that momentum is the name of the game. We saw a huge swing last week as the Seawolves roared back to win their first match of the season. And Keith Lensing told me today that that actually plays a big part in it. He said that everything was happening on their side of the ball. They had to fix the mistakes that they were making and clean it up. And we're going to see what they can do right now. We've got a nail biter here, so stay tuned, guys. Albiter it is, Jessamine. Thanks for that insight. Jessamine McIntyre, our trusty sideline eye. Telling us what we can't see, what we don't necessarily know. It's great to have this 
team of commentators supporting me here as now the support coming through thick and fast for the Seawolves. Still going and is Hatting over the line. Looks like he might be. The referee comes in, gets down on one knee. No, they're still playing just painfully short of the try line. Seattle now through Mecha coming around. That's Tolutau. Defense is up to the task. And they've turned it over. Well, they got out of jail on that occasion, the Warriors, as it gets hacked over. Yeah, Mark, man, what a close little uh, run of uh, phases the there. But it looked, it, it really looked to me, as line, we please. see the replay coming in, Billy may have thought he was closer to the line, tries to roll over. Well, Utah just st stalemates him right there, takes the ball from him, and he really should have just turned back to his side instead of trying to go for that roll. Have another chance, the Seawolves. Just on the 22 of the Warriors. Hatting, met heavily. Same way, Seema back on the inside. Tiberio looking for work, he finds it. Nearly gets through. Eight obstruction, number eight. And that's an interesting penalty. He's saying number eight for the Warriors was obstructing on that occasion. Number eight obstructing, off the ball, playing the man, yeah. Playing the man off the ball. So the defender can only tackle the man with the ball, of course. So he was playing the, the player that was in support of Tiberio and uh, didn't allow him to make that offload. And so it's a, it's a clean, clear penalty. Great call by the referee. And uh, Seattle kicking to touch. See if they can get that mall going again, Mark. Uh, you know, the, their line out has been good and bad tonight, you know, with one miss or two misses. But, but their mall has been really, really good. So just got to get the ball in their hands. Well, they have it in their hands, and they've won this line out cleanly. As the drive ensues. Good defense from Utah, pushing them toward the sideline. Have they thwarted this one? They have. So now it'll come out to Suniula taking on the line. Same way. Oh, Ooh. crunching. Dynamic run. Same way for Seattle. Seema back on the inside. Clever switch play. Staller. He rolls. Still holding on this Warrior defense. Tucker puts the head down. He's short. And now it's Hatting. He's had so many cracks at the line. And this one is successful. Just the patience, Mark, of the Seattle attack is just, uh, it's, it's beautiful. The, the time that they're taking to, to slow it down and then speed it right back up to get the ball out quickly and then to get the defense on the back foot. And so you see Brad Tucker comes in, he gets stuffed, he's trying to squeeze a couple more inches out and, and the clean out is bang, bang. So Rickard can time that perfectly and hit the line with full speed, getting the ball with just enough depth before the defense hits him and then drive his legs and, and finish. He really, that was just a manly effort and, and finishing that try. You're right, he still had work to do. He came flying in, he had a head of steam, but he was met with a great tackle. But I love the attack, the creativeness that we, we haven't seen this from Seattle the, the first few matches. Last week we saw bits and pieces late in the second half, but we haven't seen this season yet the, the dummy switch cross, right? And the wing inserting himself and, and some of the back and side passes that, that are coming with you know probably more time and more training. And uh, things look like uh, they're playing like a team. They're on the same page. Kevin, obviously, they, they have the advantage of this home crowd. Look at them. They've come out in droves again to support their team. What does this support mean to Seattle when they play at home? Oh, it's incredible. I mean, you talk to the players, Mark, and and they, they feel the energy. They, they You play harder, right? I mean, you've played in the stadiums with 30,000, 40,000. I mean, three or 4,000 can get you energized very quickly, and that that's what this crowd means to the team. I mean, it's hugely important. So now the Warriors, through Robbie Povey, taking that one well. Staring straight into the floodlights. 
of Starfire Sports. Povey finds Jensen, who then offloads to Cullen. Same way, Sunuyola makes sure he doesn't execute a dangerous tackle. That kick finds some artificial turf before ending up in the hands of Seema. He shapes up, sends it long. And that's a better strike from Ben Seema, the number 10. Great kick to touch. I mean, you're looking for the 50 typically there, right, Mark? I mean, but with the angle and, and for him to get on the other side, you know, 10 meters onto the other side is a really great clearance kick. The issue there is is the kick from Utah, you know, with no chase, no pressure. So he's able to just square up, kind of stand and take his time. So whenever you kick, it's all about the chase. It's all about the chase. You can kick it 10 meters or 50 meters. It doesn't matter if you have... Okay. If you have no chase, put the put the team under the pressure. So there's no pressure on Ben Seema. So Utah again, finding out the hard way. If you don't have an effective kick chase, the likes of Seema will punish you. As now the Warriors are forced to bring it out. A wild long pass out to the far left of the Warriors. Josh Whippy, we mentioned coming in to wing for this game. Brother Jared on the bench tonight. Expect to see him later in the game. One, wait. Another little hurried kick in behind the defense from Povey. Turner sends it up into the stratosphere. Basket does a great job. Never took his eyes off the ball. As now Robbie Povey comes in as acting scrum half. Whippy looking to get involved. No, no. Basket. Great job by the ref to talk to the players there and for them to release. It's really, I love when you see that in the rugby match. It was Cullen, the captain, throwing his weight around, but it's been turned over. So Seema now with Suniula does well to pirouette out of that heavy contest. These two man tackles coming in for the Warriors. And now Seattle. With some numbers and some space, Vili. Now Tiberio cleverly back in. That might have been high on Turner. Let's have a look and see if the referee agrees. I have to agree with you, Mark. I mean, he, he hit shoulder slid up. And in rugby, right, you cannot do that. You cannot hit the, the contact above the shoulder. So, you know, you could, you could see Matt Turner with his hand on his head. After he get a little bit of a shoulder, you know, even if that arm comes up over the, you know, hits initially with the shoulder, slides up, that angle was tough to see, I'm sure, from the referee, you know, with other players in the mix, um, you know, but uh, but hope, hopefully you get some assistance from the uh, the assistant referee and those things. It, it's really tough, uh, those slide up, we call them the slide up high tackles. Uh, there's a, definitely a gray line there. Well, we had a great view of it, didn't we? So yeah. we both thought, oh, that looked high, but the referee obviously he was watching it from the back. Yeah. So maybe that's what saved Utah on that occasion. But it's all about protecting the players, right? I mean, you know, with, without any protective gear, you have to s establish laws in the game to make sure we're protecting the players and the skill levels have to be accurate enough to, so your body height's low in the tackle and not, not coming up high and those things. Okay, so the Warriors winning that line out to the front and they drive and not commonly with a four or five person line out but they go to the kick chase that's an error from basket he didn't have much of an angle to speak of but still opted he didn't intend on that when he was outside the 22 so we know what that means kevin you need to keep the ball in if you kick the ball out on the full when you are outside your 22 the line out will come all the way back from where you kicked it and you could tell from the beginning that was a set play for them, right? I mean, as we see the Seattle coming in, straight off the line out, and they're gonna work around the edge here now from the line out, get around quick ball and get the ball out. Plenty of numbers for the Seawolves. Seema providing the link nicely. Miss pass to Tucker. 
P. Smith heading back down the short side. Oh, tries to thread the needle. It's knocked down from Utah, so it should be play on. Yep. Yep. Missed well, something in since there. Since the beginning. And then in that. So he's calling a forward, forward pass. pass. Yep. And and you can hear the Seattle players arguing, no, no, he hit it, he hit it, which he hit it backwards, but he's saying, no, sorry, you actually were throwing that forward to begin with, and then he hit it down. So it's a scrum down, minor infringement, uh, scrum down to Utah. And and we haven't had a lot of scrums tonight. I think this is only the second or third scrum. So, you know, we saw Seattle with a, a pretty strong effort in that first uh, engagement. And so I'd be interested to see hear what happens with uh, Utah if they can, they can relieve that pressure and get the ball out of their, their side Set, quickly. Warriors to feed through Baska. <laughs> Penalty to that strong scrum of Seattle. And Mark, you can weigh in on this, right? I mean, you're standing out there. There's a wide open field. You've got five or six back, back line players, you know, setting up. And, and watch this scrum. I mean, just watch the hips load in the front and they just instantly start pushing that Utah scrum backwards and then heads pop out, you know, angles change, arms fold and, and it's a penalty. So you gotta keep the structure of that scrum together. Uh, it's your responsibility. And so when that doesn't happen and the team under pressure typically will get uh, a penalty called against them for that. Sure, Seattle's done their homework on this Utah scrum that did struggle at times against Colorado last week and Austin the week prior to that. So now the Seawolves, the home team, rallied by their home fans. Now with an opportunity to extend their lead. Ooh. Big tackle. Same way. Seema sends it back to Staller, injecting from deep. He's held up. Good tackle from Utah Hatting, the try scorer. Same way, Seymour again. Crossfield kick. Ambitious play. It's a little bit too long. Tucker has to jump up. And couldn't quite pull that one back in. So it'll be a line out. Looking to go quickly are the Warriors. Nope. And to your point earlier, Mark, right, he kicked it straight out from, so the ball goes up to where he was kicking from in the line out. And so the player could have gone quick if he wanted to. He was able to run all the way back to that spot. Um, and so you saw Seattle try to defend it really quickly to, to stop him from doing that. Yep. Kevin, you talk about that. It's those little nuances and, guys, and, and it, it, it serves right. to know the laws as, as players, you're acting so quickly just a little law like that can easily be forgotten, but the presence of mind to race up knowing that, hey, I can take it all the way up here and go for a quick line out, but Seattle would just, That's right, Mark. they're in numbers. Good. So the Warriors with that drive, well defended, eventually. Use it. Baska digs in, Use it. looking to set up for the box kick. Sends it high, head down. Not a lot of forward movement from that ball. <laughs> Flying in from the back there. Who was that? Yes. Didn't quite see, but yeah. Yeah, you're may have been Staller flying in. I mean, that was a very short kick. You're looking for probably 25, 30, 35 meters on, on those box kicks so they can get chased, no, and no. it, it was run. barely 10. Yeah. Um, I didn't quite see the referee's... Uh, signal there on the penalty but perhaps it was playing the man in the air or not retreating typically what happens when it goes less or close to 10 meters the players have to retreat um, they have to make an effort to retreat and so if they don't do that they can get called for uh, an offside ball straight over the back to the Warriors and now they have some space coming in with a great tackle Tiberio he needed to do that Gannon Moore with some clever play on the ground. Ooh. Oh, what about that shot? How did he keep hold of that ball? Hatting was like a missile. But the Warriors, unfazed, bring it up to the 40-meter line of the Seawolves. Numbers out. 
Some space. Tabira has it covered. And now a better kick chase. Wait, as Matt Turner is forced to put it on the boot. Well taken by Revovo. That's an equally good tackle too from Tiberio. Turnover. Ball's here, ball's the ball's, oh, it looked like it was turned over, but it spat Wait, out on the side of the Warriors. Referee here. says play on. Wait, right but they are under immense pressure right now. So now they bring it out ambitiously. Little flick pass inside. This is what this Warriors outfit can do. Up over the halfway now. Baska. Finds the big number five, Jensen. Finally in Seawolves territory. Just look at that defense getting set. Trying to get in behind, and that's a loose pass. Tiberio, oh, he can't quite hang on. Comedy of errors. Knock on. Knock on by Red, yes. What a sequence of play, Mark. I mean, just back and forth, kicking, counterattack, turnover. I mean, you know, just non-stop action from both sides and the resiliency to regain composure over a turnover. The line breaks that happen, set up on defense, create another turnover. Now we get set and go back on attack. Boom, boom, flick pass from John Colin coming back inside. And they're on the front foot. Seattle sets up, regains themselves, right? I mean, uh, both teams are playing great rugby. Now there are little errors here and there, but the continuity of the game is staying uh, in existence. And, and I really am enjoying the, 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 the different sides of, uh, you know, from attack to offense, from, from attack to defense, and back and forth. It's, uh, it's, it's exhilarating, Mark. <laughs> I'm loving it. It is. Uh, <laughs> Kevin Swearin's out of breath up here, people. <laughs> but it is. I mean, they are certainly not clear of their opponents, the Seawolves. They lead this game coming into halftime, 14 points to seven. And with just a couple minutes left in the half here, you gotta, now with all that action, you gotta just take a couple deep breaths, reset, and now think about how do I get three points out of this at least, right? Because there's been a lot of minutes in the match here without a score, and a lot of action. You know, so so you got to think to yourself as a sea wolf. You got to think to yourself, okay, keep the ball, seven, eight, nine phases, get a penalty, kick three points. Like that's the goal, or get a penalty, kick for touch if you don't have the kick. But but you need to get that three points. And then conversely, Utah, play some hard defense, get it in their end. We've been playing too much ball in our in our territory the last five ten minutes. Kevin, what I'm hearing from that is patience I can't, I can't is key right it. now for I Seattle. They're just looking to build the score. No need to panic. They have the lead. But you also don't want to just rest on your laurels as well. You need to keep playing rugby, pushing forward. That's right. You don't Go. want, you don't want, you need points in this situation because it's all for naught at the end, right? I mean, you've done all this work for almost nothing, and so... So get the three points, that's your, that's your primary. Now if, if in those six and seven phases you make some line breaks and get inside 10 meters, well yeah, go for the, go for the try. Bit of scrum from Utah, as Suniul up over the gain line. Quick play, cycling well, Seema. Tiberio does well, beats his first defender. Takes three to get him down eventually. Same way for the Seawolves. Ting again, Seema, flat pass, and he can't hold on to it. That was Shepard. Handing the ball over to the Warriors, who now will look to clear. A hurried kick yet again, so good pressure from the Seawolves on the kicker. Staller. Ball sits up awkwardly for the Warriors, and Staller does well to get it back. But it's turned over, and watch out. The Fijian flyer puts it on the toe. Was that a knock on? Play on. So the Warriors now with some numbers out to the right. Little kick, that was a planned move. Called by Whippy, makes the tackle. Under pressure now, the Seawolves holding on. Seema there to clean up. It's, oh, <laughs> <laughs> this game has everything, folks. What about the charge down? It's just non non-stop support, Mark, from both sides. 
you know, Ben coming in around the back there and just con constant, continuous play. It was. It was just back and forth. And I tell you, this crowd had their, their hearts in their throats for a second. Yeah, they can release. They can take a couple <laughs> deep breaths here and uh, regroup, here, you know, just like the players will at halftime. But just shows what the Warriors can do, right, from anywhere at any time. And we talked about it, Kevin, that you cannot rest on your laurels. It's a narrow lead. You can't just protect that lead against a team like the Warriors. You need to keep pushing forward and wait and see what the Warriors bring out in the second half as well. And, and you're watching the game. You're seeing some mistakes here and there. Keep the discipline. And as we look, and we're going to take it down to Jessamyn. Let's hear from Jessamine McIntyre so down much, there guys. in the sideline. Brad, it's been a back and forth kind of first half. What's the key to success in the second? Uh, I think for us, just maintaining a bit more position. We've <coughs> had a bit of territory, but not stringing together enough phases and uh, putting the points over the line when it matters. All right, good luck in the second Thanks, half. Thank you. Thank you, Jessamine, with Brad Tucker, 27-year-old from Christchurch. You could hear the accent. It's halftime here at Starfire Sports Stadium, and it is a thriller. 14 points to 7 in favour of the home team, the Seawolves. Don't go anywhere, folks, as we'll be back with action in them just a moment. No, that can't be right. Yeah. That's not right. <laughs> no way. Like Major League Rugby is brought to you by Valley Shine Distillery, home of Benjamin's Bourbon. Best experienced in person. ValleyShineDistillery.com. Hashtag Together We Shine. And Virginia Mason, celebrating 100 years of patient care. Virginia Mason is the exclusive medical provider of the Seattle Seawolves. 
Discover more at virginiamason.org. Virginia Mason, here's to you. Half time here at Starfire Sports Stadium in Seattle. And Kevin, have a look at these statistics from the first 40 minutes. Yeah, great first half. Both sides, a three try effort uh, in the first half. Two coming from Seattle, one from Utah. It's been a back and forth battle. Both teams not really keeping everything together to actually put the tries in, but really exciting running, running rugby constantly throughout the first 40 minutes. So what will happen hopefully as we move into the second half is, is some uh, finishing, a little more finishing, maybe some slow it down, some penalties, because we haven't had any penalty kicks, um, not even an attempt. And so um, it's, it's been a great first half, Mark. It has indeed, and expect the same for the second half. Don't go anywhere, folks. 14 points to seven, Seattle over Utah, and we'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back to Starfire Sports Stadium. The crowd are loving what they're seeing so far. The home team, the Seattle Seawolves, leading this match narrowly, 14 points to seven over their Western Conference rivals, the Utah Warriors. And Kevin, what about that first half? What a great first half. There are really good moments from Seattle, very patient with the ball. And you see this first try in the first five minutes of the match, just battering Ram, big daddy to be Mike Shepard coming in there scoring his try of the first try of the night well it didn't take utah too long to hit back much to the crowd's dismay that strength of theirs the driving mall finally paying off which hasn't been as much as that in previous games it was 
Vuga Koto after his throw into the line out, driving forward. It was Cullen at the helm as well. And great stuff from Utah. And a little later in the half, starts getting dark here, and, and Ricard Hanning right off the side. Again, very patient. This came after four or five or six phases, I think it was. And just patient, quick, quick ruck by Seattle. Coming in, timing right, just boom, hitting him through, <laughs> driving through and getting over the white line. There's certainly nothing fancy about it. Plenty of heart, plenty of physicality. 14 points to seven, the Seattle Seawolves lead this one. Don't go anywhere, folks, because we will have kickoff when we come back from the break. Welcome back to Starfire Sports Stadium. No signs of coronavirus concerns here. The crowd's another sellout. 14 points to seven. The home team leads the Warriors. Let's have a look at this reserve bench. Expect to see most of these players coming on in the second half. Yeah, you got the beefy front row. Any one of these guys can start on a given Saturday. But I'm really excited about Rhino Eckstein coming in. Former super rugby player down in South Africa and want to see him come off the bench and inject some flair for the Seattle. Well, look at Utah to bring on some muscle in Sai Uhila, an experienced player, such an impact player as well. And of course, brother of Josh Whippy, who's out there, is Jared. Look to see him inject some excitement and dynamism as well. But the second half is underway, folks. Starfire Sports Stadium, 14 points to seven. It's a close one. We expected that. Utah coming off a loss. They're hungry for victory again. And Seattle 
playing with spurts of confidence after winning their first game of the season last week also. And they hold a narrow lead as the Warriors now will have the line out at the 40. Mark, I got to take a second. That was an amazing box kick just now uh, from the base of the scrum, or of the ruck, sorry, to get that ball out on, onto the other side of the, you know, other side of the half. It was a beautiful kick by JP. You mentioned box kicks. They're not an easy thing to execute, are they? Very hard for the nines. We'll get back to that as we see now the Warriors up to the tackle line. Quick hands. Just playing it safe. One out stuff using their big forwards. And now through the hands of the backs. Playing with plenty of patience in offense. Building those phases. Whippy, he's been heavily involved. And a penalty to the Warriors, just what they needed. Basket looks to go quickly, but he settles things down. And the player just not rolling away. It's so important in rugby to be able to uh, manage your body in the tackle as a defender. And so the skill and the, the commitment that it takes in tackling to be able to tackle the player, get him down the ground, but also be in control of him and you so that you don't fall onto the wrong side of the, the ruck and then create a penalty. And so there you saw the defender getting stuck on the wrong side, right, Mark, and, and, and a penalty awarded to Utah. Oh, that's a great explanation, Kevin. We mentioned penalties. You said before, not a lot of penalty kicks. Both wait, these wait, wait. teams are probably the most disciplined in the league. Equal 11th with penalties conceded. That's 8.3 per game so far in round five. And you can see why as the Warriors bring it off the back. Cullen doing well. Playing a distributor role. As Whippy getting in and getting busy. Taking some pressure off the forward runners. I really like how Whippy as a wing is just inserting himself in the middle of the field constantly, Mark. And straight through almost. Oh, that was... Tyler Fisher, don't want to give him any room at all. The Warriors, now through the hands, that ball goes to ground, under pressure, cleaning up his Revovo, flicks out the back, Fiji and style, and spots a gap, straight through, is that, that's Fisher again, same way for the Warriors, Seattle under pressure, charging forward, he's over the line, it's try, the first try of the second half to the Warriors fighting back well Fisher was in everything it's a beautiful start by Utah they get the ball down they get the penalty kick for the line out and they just they just started playing with the ball playing with the ball and it was the broken play where the ball gets flung behind them and and they start you know just kind of weaving in and out of defense here but it was their patience and their ability to just hold on to the ball and not get frantic and, and so you see just the tail end there of the player uh, uh, just diving over and, and letting his momentum take him and carry him through. It was, it was Fisher and, and just the amount of work rate to be in, in multiple phases back, you know, one after another is, uh, is, is pretty incredible. Well, I thought Fisher there, Kev, was uh, a deserved finisher of that movement to claim the five points he initiated it making breaks everywhere just so busy it's like when a running back you know marches down you know gets 40 50 60 yards of a drive and and they get to the one yard line right and you want to give that ball to that guy doesn't always happen in rugby but but there he was able to to kind of get rewarded for the efforts that he uh, the the efforts that he put forth and a dream start for Utah, you know, four minutes into the game, into the second half here, uh, tying, the, tying it up. And uh, we knew the second half was going to be like this. It was going to be a back and forth. We knew that tries were start to come. So now what can Seattle do to kind of get that momentum back for on their side? The conversion was good, as you see, 14 points all. Bobby Povey. Not the easiest of kicks either for him. As the Warriors now playing with their tails up. A hurried kick into touch. Not the best for Utah, as you will see now. Seattle look to hit back immediately. 
and you got a player down, so there's going to be a couple minutes here uh, checking on his health, and uh, hopefully he'll be fine. But but you see that kick there, Mark, right? Like, here we go again. The, 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 the try happens. You get the ball. You receive it in your 22, and your goal is to get outside your 40. I mean, that's that's really where you want to be comfortable. And, and you take that kick. It kind of shanks off your foot a little bit goes off the inside of his foot and, and is on the 25 meter line instead. Does it help? If I thought it was a high tech, I would have awarded the one. Yeah. So I didn't see the same thing, maybe a wrong, but yeah. anyway. It was, more, it was more of that. And the ref's just talking to the players right now about possible um, you know, foul play. I didn't, I didn't have this picture. But he didn't get to see that, and so he's just saying, you know, I'm, uh, look, I'm sorry I didn't see it, but. Well. <laughs> Let's hear from Jessamine down on the sideline. Jessamine. Yeah, guys, unfortunate injury news for uh, the Seawolves as well as we look at this Utah Warriors player who's coming off the field. But F.P. Pelzer is out, number four for the Seawolves. He has been taken to the locker room with an, a left arm injury. It did look pretty bad as, uh, you know, these guys do not come off the field easily. So uh, he will not return for the Seawolves tonight. Yeah. Oh. F.P. Pelzer, thank you, Jessamine. Never good to see a player leave the field injured. And as you said, must be pretty serious. There's Peltzer on that occasion. Hopefully he's okay. And Eric Duchel coming in off the bench for him. But now the players are just trying to keep themselves warm. Keep the adrenaline going as the Utah player being treated is back on his feet. Like Van Vuren. So now, the Seawolves, what can they do? They send it to the back. Just a little bubble. Comes down, albeit not clean. Can't clean it up. So the Warriors piling over the ball. Box kick from Basker. Find some space. Staller fires it into Turner. Sets himself nicely and then launches it into the grandstand. I'm just looking, that was a great kick by the way from Utah, you know, very timely. Nobody's back because there's a quick turnover. Get the ball be in and behind them, get on the front foot. But uh, just looking at the substitutions, you know, we've got a few here from Kutze uh, for Shepard and, and Lennart from, you know, for, for FP Felser and, and Eric Duchel all coming in uh, at the start of the half. Ball overthrown, Seattle. Rampaging run from Vili Tolutau. And that's created a penalty opportunity. So now Seattle with the penalty kick. Seema will step up. And that started, if you look back, that started from the power in Vili's run. So because he got he got past the point of contact and continued through, the defenders ends up on the wrong side of the ball, and the Rutgers come in and kind of seal those players in, and now they're they're hanging out on the wrong side of the ball, created a penalty. So that's just smart play. That's just creative, you know, rucking that creates that penalty. And so the player just got trapped, and and that's unfortunate for him. And the Warriors have learned the hard way with their ill discipline because Ben Seema has sent the ball almost within 10 meters of the line. Fantastic kick as the drive comes in from the Seawolves. The crowd are on their feet, still going. The Seawolves ushered toward the sideline. They finally break free. The referee likes it. It's a try. It's a try. Let's see who emerges from the rubble. The Seawolves hit back and the crowd love it. Looks like Tolutau is getting a lot of Congratulations, well, Kev. What a, what, a, what a fight back, right? What a response to the try. And you see here where they, they lock in, they're tight. The Utah players can come through the middle, but they can't come around the side to stop that. So they have to, they have to break it up. And it looks like, it looks like S Steven. Could see yeah, was it Steven Kutsia was uh, the substitute off the bench. So, uh, you know, matching his counterpart, Mike Shepard, from the first half, putting a try on the board, uh, the, the two uh, hookers there. Uh, a really well-designed, just tight 
uh, technically sound maul from that line out to get back up on top, five points. The conversion, rock solid with the boot, Ben Seema. I think he's, uh, well, I won't jinx him. <laughs> he's, he's kicking well this year, let's just say that. Let's say that, he's kicking say. well since uh, his, his debut last week and, uh, and adding a, a huge amount of value to this team and, and just organizing the attack and, 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 his, and his foot. Still such a young man, Ben Seymour, only 23. 10 caps already for the US. As JP Smith just patiently rakes the ball back in position for the box kick. That one's a longer one. And that is a clearing effort up over the halfway. Good kick from JP Smith. He's just got a monster boot, Mark. I mean, that left foot off the base, you know, he doesn't have to pass it back an extra 15 meters, you know, to this 10, who then has to clear it, you know. So he's getting really good yardage off those kicks from the base. And they just, they've really worked in honing in that setup to get him the angle as well. Warriors another overthrow, so their lineouts just crumbling a little bit at the moment. And Seattle so quick on the turnover. Suniula shapes up dummies. Met with a very strong tackle from his opposite number. And you can see Shalom was a little double-minded, right? So he wasn't sure what to, to pass or to step in, and it was a half step into contact. He gets pushed back, and, and that kind of slows the ball down a little bit. It kind of it took away the momentum of the attack, and, and then it followed up by an actual mistake there and turnover. So, you know, in that situation, you want to just step on that foot, go hard into contact, or give the ball and give the ball maybe a half a step earlier. So there was a little bit of confusion there. Um, but, uh, but hey, you know, they, they've got a strong scrum, uh, Seattle does, and so Utah's gonna wanna get this ball out and get this ball out quickly to relieve the pressure uh, playing in their territory. Baska feeds the scrum, they're holding firm despite the shove from Seattle. Baska has to dig in, he may be held up here, support comes in, looks like it was turned over, Tolutau, too strong. So now it's the Seawolves. No, it's not. Just couldn't quite convert that turnover as the penalty is awarded to the Warriors. It's so tough to see what's going on in the middle of that ruck and that, that mess, especially with the turnover. And so you see the referee kind of sweeping his arm, saying the player played the ball on the ground. You have to be on your feet to play the ball in rugby. And so you know, uh, probably lost the ball a little bit and tried to push it back again. Um, and, and that's gonna award a penalty. That's another big kick from Robbie Povey here. So important that you can get your team out of those situations. Watching a couple subs run on the field here on Utah's side. This looks like uh, Mongoloa, the number 17 jersey. Utah, another big human, and Kololo, Tuiloma. Better throw from the Warriors. Bring it down, looking to drive. Nice counter from Seattle. Been adjusting to this Warriors strength. Driving them sideways, heading midfield. Still on their feet, the Warriors. It's good play from them. As now, finally, Basca looks like it was brought down and a little kick ahead. It won't matter. It'll come back, dragging down the driving mall there, Kev. That's right, Mark. I mean, they just, he's calling Seattle for pulling down the mall. You, you're not allowed to just drop to your legs and fall under guys and, and really try to just pull it down. You have to stymie it. You have to stop it. It's not, it's not, not just brute force, but but by twisting and turning and, and peeling guys off. And so Utah did a great job. You can see guys get peeled off and then come right back in and re reunite, you know, into that the tight kind of mall. And, and Seattle just pulling the pulling them all down. 
Um, if they didn't turn that ball over there after that, right, they could have just kept playing. They had the advantage, but they turned it over so the referee went back to the penalty. And they're gonna try it again. They're gonna go right back to the mall here, Mark. It's what they do well, the Warriors. Already scored in the first half through Bugakoto. And they've done it again. The referee throws the arm up just as easy as that. Kevin Swearing picked it. I mean, Mark, it's been working for him. Why not go back to what's, you know, been kind of easy? And so that was even uh, uh, an easier effort than their previous try from the malls. And so they just peeled right off, uh, coming, coming, coming straight in. And so you just see quick, right up front, easy throw for the hooker. And I believe he comes in, grabs the ball, but it's the substitute to Iloma that pulls the ball out and sees a gap. And as the, as the mall is pushing to the left, he peels off right, darts in, finds the gap, finds the seam, touches down for a try and, and hopefully for the tie uh, if the conversion comes through. But it, it, Mark, it starts all the way back here, right? I mean, the penalty for playing it on the ground, they kick to the sideline, they get a they get a mall, they go 20 meters, they get another penalty, they kick. I mean, it's the multiple multiple mistakes, the multiple penalties that are really hurting Seattle right now. And what also hurts Seattle is that conversion, 21 points to 21. We have a game here, ladies and gentlemen, already 42 points scored in this match. Giving the crowd what they paid for. Although they certainly, a lot of these fans paid for a Seattle win. Still plenty of rugby to play. Tui Loma has just come on the field. Scores a five-pointer, but it's now the Seawolves with the ball. Up in Warriors territory. Putting it through the hands. Haven't seen much of Sears Duru in attack. Clever kick again by Seema. Just applying the pressure. That's a great kick by Ben. He sees there's nobody behind on defense. There's just one fullback, Revovo. And so he kicks it to the corner. He, he, they could have kept the ball there, Mark, right? And just played five, six, seven, eight phases and gained five, 10 meters. But instead, one kick, no effort, and it's a 20, 25 meter gain. So very smart. Now you want to attack this line out, right? I mean, that's the, got, the idea is put more pressure on them so, so that you get the ball back quickly in the next couple phases. Utah now. Ball comes to ground. Basket digging in. And it'll come to another scrum. Probably. Oh, it's a scrum for the Seawolves. Yeah, they set up their mall there. And, and you know, you, you, as the attacking team, you have the responsibility to get that ball out. You, you set up a mall. Well, you need to keep that ball. And so the idea is that mall collapsed and was unplayable, and so it turns back over to Seattle for, for not being able to play the ball out of the mall. We mentioned that is a key to victory Crouch. for the Warriors, opting for that drive Bang. often in their games and a lot of the times not resulting in anything. No. Tonight they've scored a couple of tries, so they've worked on finishing the driving mall, but on that occasion, as you explained, Kevin, not getting the ball out in time. So we've got a couple subs come in from both sides in the front row. It's, it's their first scrum with these two front rows, these new front rows. And so it'll be interesting to see because Seattle had the front foot, you know, in the, in the scrums. What is Seattle going to do here? Are they going to keep the ball in and try to get to the penalty? Right? You see their setup right now with the backs. They've got three backs really tight. And, and so, you know, at least I can see it. <laughs> the fans can't. But they're looking for a quick, quick hitter off the back with the eight to the backs, or just drive and try to get the penalty. Basker under pressure. Offside, offside number nine. Illegal pressure, it turns out. What was in yet? And the timing of the nine there was just a little too early. He really was feeling eager. He's got to stay behind the ball, stay behind the ball. And he, he left his position too soon before the ball was out creating the offsides penalty. I mean, he was just a hair offside. So here you go, you know, exactly probably what Seattle wanted to get into the line out and to get their opportunity to, to maul something in now. We saw 
you quite often see those feisty matchups between the nines. JP Smith under pressure from Basco. It's resulted in a penalty, which has resulted in this drive. But Utah doing their best to neutralize, marching again toward the goalposts. Okay. Keeping it going are uh, the Sea Wolves. Looking ominous now for the Warriors. One meter out from the line. The arm comes out from the referee playing advantage. So Seema drops it on the boot. Why not? Goes a little too long. Uh, you were from the side, I told you. And the referee there just telling the player, I don't know who from uh, Utah, that you came in from the side and I told you. So he's he's talking to the players, say, get out of there, get out of there. Um, and, and they don't. So advantage to Seattle. Ben, smartly, right, very intuitively comes in and says, okay, let's yeah, just put one up top. Who cares? We're going to get the ball back anyway. And, and, and so basically he's trying to, he's trying to put a 50-50, a right? The, he's got a penalty. He knows we're going to have the ball back. He kick, if he kicks a little bit better kick, he's got his guys chasing, and uh, it's a 50-50 ball. They go up, catch it, try time. Okay, we just took the advantage, and the try becomes the advantage instead of going back to the penalty, which the penalty is the advantage because they kicked it out the back. Yeah, it's a high-risk play, but as you said, Kevin, it's kind of like a, a free play, if you yes. like. Knowing that they'll get a penalty if it doesn't come off, but now peeling up the back, and Tolu Tao. He's come to life in this second half. Houting, is he over again? He is! Seattle! They've broken the deadlock. 26 yeah. points to 21 with a kick to come. And for sure that kick's coming, but look at the play off the back. This is the this is the third or fourth time this season I've seen Seattle make this roll off the back, pop it to one of their players like like um, Penny or Tolotau, and they get five or six meters, and then the timing of Ricard's runs here is what's so key, right? Because players are creeping, 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 and then they get flat, and, and the defense just smashes them, two guys. So he's hanging back, he's hanging back, and that ball could have come out one step quicker, but he didn't creep. And so once the ball comes out, boom, he hits his line, and he's able to s swivel through and, and kind of creep through that defensive line. He's super slippery for how big of a man he is, and he's got a second try for the double. And Seema adds the extras. What a break. As now break. they have secured themselves a bonus point with the four tries. As now we come into a short hydration break for the players. Don't go anywhere, folks. We will be back for the last quarter of the match in around about a minute. You I can, but I did, yeah, but I never saw, I, I thought, my vision was you came through the side. Okay. That was my view. Okay. You know, right. yeah. That's why I was maintaining my position. Okay, I, I, I know and what to say. I'm, I, I hear you. And then Julian Watch the reverse. They're like, our left on the ground. Yeah, okay, I got it. Watch the penalty count for them. They're under pressure. Okay. You know, it helps. Thank you. Welcome back to Starfire Stadium where the Seawolves have just taken a lead. I am standing by with Tim Metro, scored the first try of the match. Tim, what was the key to success in your opening try? We knew these guys are going to be physical. They've got that big forward pack. We've worked all week to make sure we try and counter that with that physicality. And it's coming off in spades for us today. And it seems like momentum you've been able to capitalize on. How do you keep it going in this final 20? Yeah, we wanted to keep pressure on them by playing footy in our half and, and continuing to put that pressure on them. We've, we've, we've found success with that with a rolling mall and a couple of positive scrums. So hopefully we can close that out in the next 20 minutes. Thank you so much. Good luck no in this. Worries. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank you, Jessamine and Tim Metcher. Uh, that familiar Australian accent. Right at home, Mark. Right at home. Boy from Maroubra in New South Wales. Just around the corner from where I grew up as well. 
Probably heard of the Bra Boys, have you, uh, <laughs> Kevin? The surfers? Yeah. You would have been a Bra Boy, I think, if you <laughs> grew up in Sydney, I'm sure. Possibly. A documentary about them narrated by, I think it was Russell Crowe, famous surf gang. Don't know why we're talking about surfing, because we are here at Starfire Sports Stadium, Seattle. I've once again taken the lead. 28 points to 21. It's a nail biter here. I'm Mark Stabina, joined by Kevin Swearin. And the Utah Warriors having some trouble in their line out. Managed to just pull that one in under the defensive pressure of the Seawolves, who are by no means clear in this match. Warriors proving dangerous from anywhere, especially this man, Gannon Moore. He leads. She's one of the top leaders of running meters in this major league rugby competition this season there he is again loves to get involved normally a center finds himself on the wing will flick out the back from a standing start fortunately his teammates clean up as basker gets in there and he's been dangerous this game fisher has gone back so Whippy cleans up. Bask Baskers quick to the base of that ruck. Oh, that ball was straight to Hatting if he could just hold on, but it'll come back for the original knock on. So still possession with the Warriors. And you hear the crowd booing. I love the energy, but they, they obviously didn't uh, see the advantage go up for the knock on from Seattle, you know, two phases earlier. So. Right, they're into this game. They're really feeling the intensity of the hits and the, uh, the just the, the, the prowess of both teams coming at each other. You know, it's, it's really, I can't get enough of it, Mark. I don't know if it's because it's my, my first live game this year. You know, I'm excited. Well, when we talk about home ground advantages, Kevin, right, we know it's hard enough for the opposing team traveling to have the crowd in favor of the Seattle Seawolves. But spare a thought for the referee as well. With moments like that, where the crowd is trying to influence the referee's decision, it takes a referee with thick skin, such as Enrique Plate, to ignore the crowd and still try and call a fair And match. let's give him a shout out right now, because I think he's refed a, a phenomenal game tonight. And uh, with talking to the players and telling them about their infringements before they happen. Correct. Mon Monsieur Plate, merci, as we have now the Warriors looking to equalize some space out there whippy fires it out revovo so dangerous the olympic champion and now quick line speed from seattle was a little disjointed allowing warriors just to get in behind that defense and now into the 22 of the seawolves ball's gone back so it's play on but they'll need to clean this up if they are to capitalize basket taking on the defense Great play from the Warriors. Holding on, they've done this so well, building the phases. And they make their way through. Almost getting through, it's those last stitch tackle efforts from the Seawolves, inside pass. They're using that well now, trying to find some chink in the armor of Seattle. Pass from Jensen. Goes out, comes back into Jensen. The crowd thought it was forward. And it's a penalty to the Seawolves again after a massive defensive stand. And remember that the Seawolves at 28 have a bonus point already. So that gives them five points, Kev. You look at this points tally breakdown. If, if they win, of course, right? Four points for the win. An extra bonus point gives them five if they hold on here. Right. You know, similarly, Utah is going to be looking and searching for that fourth try. So, you know, they can get their bonus point, obviously tie it up and, and those things. And so you can get three points, you know, for four tries and a tie. And that's almost like a victory. So it, extremely important there to, uh, to get the fourth try in, in this type of matchup. Well, that's right. If it was full time right now, you see the score. What that means basically is Seattle would have five and Utah are within seven points, so they would get one losing bonus point. Gets confusing, I know, but every bonus point counts in this league on the road to the playoff. As Kutsia 
marches forward. Tucker now looks for support, finds it in Tolutau. Ball slips out. Was a double knock. First by blue, then by red. And a very smart call by the ref again. I mean, he's just, he's, he's having, okay. he's having one of the better games of the match here, you know, calling this, but, but you can see a, a slight little gap here and a flick pass with Tolotao coming in and just getting loose with the ball. It gets popped out and then Utah's player hits it. It goes off forward for him. Utah player hits it forward and, and it's a bang, bang play. So, so scrum back to Utah. It seemed to be one of those occasions. Tolu Tau, I don't think he was expecting that. He never quite had secure possession, did he? He had the ball tucked kind of under the wing and then took off and accelerated, but just a little bit too much rapid movement. Yeah, that ball slipped out. And Utah has been really doing a great job with their attack and their continuity of play, which means, right, having many phases back to back. And, and so they're just not and getting with the finish, right? They're getting super close and then a turnover and Seattle relieves the pressure. And a great scrum by Utah there to take advantage and get a pen and earn a penalty big time from the front row of, of Utah. Warriors, Warriors fighting back. Let's have a look at that scrum again. You mentioned it, Kev. So you can see Seattle's player, he kind of loses his grip straight away off that scrum the front row there and and if you if you don't hold on if you don't keep that arm up it's automatic penalty so he comes back to get it but he's already just been put under pressure from the initial hit so so he's obviously you know gonna work on that in his next scrum but it was just that initial contact he really just got he just got um you know taken taken to the house there on that one mark probably hear this crowd rallying for their home team who hold a Not narrow great. lead. Captain. And it's a it's a kind of a late call from the ref, and you can hear one of the players say, Why are you calling that so late? But he was probably getting some assistance from his uh, you know, referee on the on the touchline there. Um, you know, the ball has yep. to travel in the middle of no. the line out. The it cannot row, be favored to one side or the run. other. So not straight call. Seattle chooses to go with the scrum here. Let's see how they combat that last scrum where they pretty much got dominated and um, and see if they can they can hold up the, the, the power of that big front row from Utah. So the Seawolves now, and you see some confidence now in this Warriors scrum. Charging forward. Up to the 40 meter line, just shy of. It's JP Smith. Uses his feet to usher that ball to the back. The back foot of Tucker sending it up. 50 50 conte contest as Baska ends up swooping it off the ground into Calvin Whiting's hands. Povey. Now the Warriors looking to move the ball the same way, just wrapping around, whipping, injecting again. Flat pass, Revovo with some space. Don't give him too much. Up to the 40 now, Baska, dummies. And then heads open. Boom, <laughs> big run by Colin. Cullen was monstered to the ground, but does well to maintain possession. Thought it might have been flirting with the danger of an obstruction as well. And now just putting it through the hands. Whippy again, looking for action. Same way, straight to the line. Strong run from Povey, still going, looks for support. It's raked out, but in the direction of the Warriors. So it's play on as the ball is hacked downfield. Turner gives chase. Revovo finally brought down by Turner. The Warriors maintain possession again. Coming out in the air, that was a tough pass. It's gonna be tricky to pull that one in. Whippy apologizes. And that was Saya okay. Uhila. 
trying to pick that one up against his uh, ankles there, Kevin. <laughs> He's already <laughs> tall enough. You, you, well, you, and you can see the players that, you know, hands on hips, they're playing a lot of rugby. I mean, it's nonstop. That's true. And the pace and the kicks and the, right? I mean, it's it's an anaerobic, aerobic, you know, nightmare for some of these, you know, cardiovascular systems. And so they just, you know, probably need, it's nice actually, the, the referee's taking a little break. It's like, hey, let's catch our breath because, right, the game is meant to be played that way, uh, but can't be played all the time, 80 minutes like that. And, and that was a big passage of play, two to three minutes of nonstop contact, hitting, getting up, tackling, you know, exertion of, of every muscle of your body. So, uh, you know, I just, it's, it's intense out there. The, these teams are just coming hard over and over and over and, the, and, and just loving it, Mark. I mean, I'm just happy that uh, I'm not playing anymore. <laughs> Let's be honest. just thinking that myself. And that's something that this Utah team has been criticized for. Early in the season, they've started slow, is their cardiovascular fitness hasn't really been up to speed. You see, they've started slowly traditionally, and then you see them come toward the end of the season as they start to pick up their fitness. So I'm sure it's something they've worked on. As you see, they're matching it now with Seattle. Again, traditionally, one of the fitter teams you have to be to be the MLR champions two seasons back to back. As that ball flies over the head of Turner. Dances, brings it back, Whippy, up to the task. As the numbers come back in support for Seattle. Who else but Hatting there in first receiver. Charging forward. Back into the pocket. Wait 16. Thank you. Now Thank Revovo you. sends it into the middle of the field to Povey. See some space. That's a great kick. See if he gets the bounce. It does. Bounces forward and stays in just enough for Turner. No. Staller. Over on the far side. Big hit from Utah. And some big men and there's some big clashes here at Starfire Sports Stadium tonight. And they are not relenting. Another box kick from JP Smith. Sends it long. Uncontestable as Revovo electrifying with ball in hand from the back whippy again well he's just turned up everywhere yeah for all the kids back at home man his his work rate to get involved in the game he's not just sitting out on the wing he's he's making work for himself and and rewarding himself you know by coming off a of 10 constantly 12 and and some of those spots got to give some credit to the Seawolves defense. Multiple phases and they still haven't got over the half after the initial run from Revovo. Just so watertight. Bend, don't break is the motto. And still unable to get through and breach this defense. The Warriors, valiant effort finally in behind the defense that was whiting quick tap from baskin not on the mark says monsieur plate just a little in front of the mark there and and those those can be pretty frustrating but but if you're you know two meters to the left or the right that's one thing but if you're two meters in front that's a whole nother mark and and what patience by utah i mean two that's another two or three minute passage of play back and forth, kicks going again, and, and Utah just regrouping, playing phase after phase after phase on the 50, and then eventually earning the penalty. I mean, that's patient, patient rugby, and, and now they're giving themselves a chance to win or tie the game, right, is get into this game here by the sustained pressure in attack in, in Seawolf's territory. They are not done yet, this Utah Warriors outfit, as they resort to their strength of the driving mall. Seattle now they know what's coming as they drive in with force you see the patients just keeping on their feet well staying tight staying bound 
finally comes to ground. This is dangerous territory for the home team who lead by only seven points. The Warriors charging forward. Basca. Penalty to the Warriors. What will they do? Uh oh. Look out. That was deliberate penalty. Okay. And a deep sigh from both of us, Mark. <laughs> it was already dangerous territory. And That's now, right. what does this mean? Kevin Swearing, yellow card to Seattle. And that is it. They are now going to play with only 14 men for the rest of this match. So you've got a couple of thoughts running through your mind. Your, your hooker front row player just got sent to the sin bin. So they're going to have to bring in a substitute, a front row substitute, and take off a back rower, right? And so now you're, are you going to keep seven in the scrum or are you going to bring a back in to bring, bring, have that extra weight and, and then you're down a man in the backs, which is, you know, tough. You put the fullback who kind of, kind of roams normally. He can come up on the line. But so it's really technical now. When, and, and you're five meters out, middle scrum, you can go right, you can go left. Um, so, so right, tech, generally you're going to put that eighth man into the scrum if you're feeling confident. Um, you know, or because Vili, you know, in the back is a front row player, he can he can come in and, and play that hooker position without making any changes. And so they, what they've done is they just took Ricard Hantig onto the side. There's no eight man. And so they're going 7v8 on the scrum, which again, with how strong their scrum is, that's a smart move. And so they can play equal numbers in the back line. Warriors. Driving forward, Seattle oh. playing a man down. That's a penalty try, and they can't believe it. The Warriors lifting the scrum. They were charging toward the try line. The referee explains, collapsing the scrum. And that's a little bit harsh, Mark. I will say so. Right? I mean, he's he's saying it's a deliberate it's a deliberate collapse of the scrum. So he's calling that the penalty. And now he's calling that the penalty try. But it's a little bit harsh considering it was the first time. It wasn't multiple events. And so, but fair enough. I mean, it's called, it's, it is what it is. And so a tie ball game, they automatically get the seven points. Tie ball game, let's see what happens. Both teams with the bonus point, tie on the board. Down a man, two minutes to go. Got to keep the ball in their half. If you're Seattle and if you're Utah, get out. Get out of your half. What a finish we have here. Lined up, two minutes to go. Starfire Sports Stadium, Seattle playing with 14 men against the 15 of Utah. They hit back, penalty try. This is where you really need your reserves to step it up. You've got six or seven guys out there that got a little extra energy. We need right we need as players we need those guys to step up whether you're utah and you're defending like maniacs or you're seattle down a man here comes seattle charging over the advantage line the outside. tucker finding his way cullen tries to hold him up same way turner Still going. You hear the chants, a collective cheer of this Seawolves Stadium. Just, just going straight in, Mark, with intent, with attack. Eckstein, the replacement. You'll see these Warriors come in. They need to be careful as well to not infringe because that would just take a penalty kick. And that's a huge penalty. So he's coming all the way back for advantage of offsides. Seattle had played four, five, six, maybe even seven phases there with the advantage. Not enough. The ball kind of gets scrappy in the ruck, and so he comes come on, back hey, for come the on, penalty. Come on, respect, respect. It was a player offside. I don't recall the number. It was a player offside here. Off the first breakdown? Yeah, here. Well, he's fairly certain about it. Not who it was, but that it happened. That's right, and 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 no-brainer kick for Seattle to to line up here, uh, for to kick for points and and get those three points. Now, now, 
it'll be interesting. We see 79, 44, 46 on the clock. Is that what the referee's clock has? And, and there may be one or two extra minutes left in the game. We don't know for sure. Um, but Brock Stoller lining up. Well, it's been Ben Seymour all night as well. So pressure kick, you would say, for Brock Stoller. It's a crucial one. You could hear a pin drop right now. Stoller. Potentially to win the game. Puts it up. The crowd love it. But there is time, as Kevin Swearen suggested. So this game is not over. And the Utah Warriors are capable of anything. They've proven themselves thus far. And do remember that they play with an extra man. Yeah, so it looks like Ben Sima was subbed out. And we've got Rhino Eckstein in the match here. So, so you know, Staller taking the kicking duties and, and, and basically potentially the game winner. That's the class of Staller, isn't it? He had an opportunity to warm into his goal kicking and he is asked to step up for potentially the match winner. So much experience from the Canadian. And what do we have here? Wow. Penalty to Utah. Again, with a chance to equalize. What about the drama of this match, Kevin Swearing? I mean, so here you're talking, Mark, I'm kind of laughing because it's been so exciting back and forth and and if this ends in a tie, or are they going to kick for? They're going to kick for touch here. They're going to go for the win. They're they're backing. They're banking on that mall. Mark, you called it in the beginning of the match. Keys to victory, right? And they're just going. You know what? We're coming into your house. We're going to maul you down, grind you down. They've done it already a couple times in the match. So let's see what happens, Mark. I mean, what a statement. This is it, right? What a statement. This Utah Warriors team are making. We are not happy with a draw. We have come here to win, and they have the opportunity. And it could be a result of Schulte being out of the match, but here so we go. So the Warriors, here we go. That drive, still going, charging forward. It breaks free. Last foot. Three meters from the try line. Last play of the game. The Warriors, will they have the last say here in Seattle? The crowd are on their feet chanting for their home team to hold on but the Warriors they are looking solid and they have a penalty advantage as well Basca Povey waits Basca comes out fires it out it's intercepted but it will be a penalty five meters out pretty much in front of the uprights what? so what do you do here Mark because they they Scrum. they just got they just got a penalty, penalty try, try right so do they do the sure thing and kick for points and tie no way well i mean judging from their their, their last decision to go for the line as we said they've come here to do one thing and one thing they want and that is and this will potentially give them five points and the game and the game cannot end on a on a penalty, so you're going to play no matter how much time's left. But you see the the Utah team there; they already have the advantage. Seattle right now, the, it's it's just time to man up. I mean, they're down a man; they've got to lock in this scrum. Uh, you know, 78. Biggest scrum of the match for both these teams. That's an obvious statement, but especially for Seattle as now the ball comes out down the short side. Great defense from Seattle, holding on. Basket comes in, fires it into his troops. Inside the five meter. Still going, recycling quickly. You see those Seattle players getting out, setting up their defense. They need to, they're one down. Ball comes out the back, that's panic play from the Warriors. There you go, there you go. Oh, this is heart attack stuff. Basca to the big replacement. No matter what side you're on, you got to be patient here with the ball or on defense. Cullen to Revovo. Holding on for dear life. Oh, that was nearly knocked on. And Tucker trying to rip the ball. He might have ripped it. He has. 
Tucker, no, but it's a penalty again. Can you believe it? 85 minutes gone. I told you. Well, it might nearly be time for the yellow card player That's, to come back. I was just yeah. going to say that, Mark. I mean, you're talking about him being out of the match for the rest of the game, and here we are five or six minutes post the 80-minute mark. And just multiple penalties after penalty and, and you know, an already exhausting match. As you see Tola Tau trying to save that ball from going out. And so you've got... You've got the you've got the two players holding him up, holding him up, but the referee saying release, release, because his knee was already on the ground, and they didn't listen to him, rip the ball out, penalty, true and true, correct call by the referee. So here we go, back to the rolling ball. Surely, one of the most epic finishes to a major league rugby match, as the Warriors trail by three, and they are not interested in drawing this match as they drive forward. Great defense by Seattle to stop that mall. Still with possession, the Warriors. As your commentators are losing their voice up here in the booth, they've gone forward, they're a meter out. The crowd yelling, screaming for their team, chanting for this seawall. And they need it, Mark. Forward. They do need it, indeed. One meter from the line, the Warriors. They are going to try and barge their way over this try line. Make no bones about it. And another advantage held up by the referee. Immense pressure being piled onto this home team. Painfully close. It's held up. It's going to be a scrum. Now it'll come back for a penalty. How much longer can this <laughs> Seawolves team hold on, Kevin Swearing? Well, it's time for, it's certainly time for the yellow card to come back on the, the, it's 10 minutes of play. So they might get another man, but is it too little, too late? I mean, playing 14 men down, sorry, playing one man down, 14 v 15. You know, the captain right now, they're probably just so, so exhausted, they can't even realize that they might need their player back on the pitch. Time for the yellow card? Yep, here he's okay. calling it. Okay, he's so calling him back in. That might be the extra juice Seattle needs. What, what, yes, psychologically, I was going to say that, Kevin. You see your man come on just when you need it to happen. I mean, I mean the defense, the, the efforts from both teams. This is this is a a microcosm of the macro event that's been happening tonight, right? I mean, we're talking about 87 minutes of rugby and just fierce competitiveness and attack and defense and just smashing each other all game and nobody's lighting up the stalemate is true nobody wants to give an inch and nobody's sitting down in this stadium <laughs> not that i can see so the warriors the shove comes back from seattle scrum collapses it's another penalty but can they score the warriors snatching victory from the home team in dramatic fashion, the sea wall piling in. Up to the five meters, the Warriors retaining possession valiantly. Basket digs in. The sea wall not just holding on, but they are advancing pushing this warrior outfit back, trying to force the error if they can. Running out of juice now, you see them losing shape a little, the Warriors. And just a relentless commitment in the contact area from both teams and Seattle flying up. They're tired, the Warriors are tired and the Seawolves know it. How is this match gonna end? I mean, nobody knows. Baska. Ball goes between his legs to pick and drive. Is this going to be the tactic? Picking and driving. It's not pretty rugby, but they're looking for the win. Comes out with some space. Great tackle. Still on his feet. Oh, he looks like he's held up. Is it over the line? Oh! Pick and drive. He's over. He's over. It's try time. Was it Basker in the corner? Yes, it is. Can you believe it? The what? Oh, finish! <laughs> oh, look at this team. 
and they're stunned in the stadium, but Utah is exuberant. They are pumped. They're waving to the crowd, let's go. And nobody's responding, but they are pumped. What an effort by Utah Warriors. That was a team effort. 23 men coming off the bench, eight guys coming off the bench, adding to the value, non-stop action. Wow. We, we need a little break to catch our breath here, ladies and gentlemen, full time. And what a game, 33 points to 31. Don't go anywhere as we come back after the break for post-match comments. Yeah. No. I would say the number nine. Just to finish it, yeah. Or, or yeah. Fisher. No, just, yeah. Oh, I think Basca. Yeah, Michael Basca. Yeah. Uh, no. Now we're using the uh, Utah. Oh, uh, Rickard. Rickard Hansing. Major League Rugby is brought to you by Intermountain Healthcare, helping people live the healthiest life possible. Utah Warriors, visit warriorsrugby.com for tickets, merchandise, and everything Utah Warriors. Warriorsrugby.com. And on watch, see the signs, stop the cycle. Well, we finally got our breath back here at Starfire Sports Stadium. Can you believe what you see? We can't. 33 points to 31. The Utah Warriors have snatched victory at the death on the road here in Seattle. And let's see how that all finished here. Kevin Swearin. Wow. What a game. And after keeping it in tight with the forwards, they flip it outside to the backs. Huge run by number 12. And... Calvin Whiting just finishing it up, uh, and 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 Utah, what a finish! Thanks, guys. I'm standing here, man of the match, Michael Basca. Now that wasn't just 80 minutes; that was 90 minutes of pure adrenaline. You guys pulled it out in the end. What happened on that final try? Uh, during the week, we've talked about playing a complete 80 minutes of rugby and everyone owning their roles. And I think the boys did really well there towards the end of everyone just doing their job and uh, playing a full 80 plus minutes and luckily today we came out with the win. A bit of a hostile environment. We know that the Seattle crowds can be great. What did you guys do at halftime to really kick in that second half? Uh, for the past four weeks we've had a bit of a lapse after right at halftime and we've really been working hard on coming out in the second half and uh, really setting the tone and today we did that with scoring a try right off the get-go so kudos to the boys and you know, it's nice to see something that we've been working on really hard for the past four weeks kind of finally come to fruition, so it was good. Yeah, and then you get to head on home, a road win, big victory. What does it mean to you? Oh, I mean, it's, it's a good stepping stone to a long season, and uh, I'm really proud of the boys. Everyone put in 1-23, to 23, a good effort, and we go back um, home and uh, 
you know, work hard again this week on the things we need to do and hopefully get a victory versus NOLA. All right, good luck in you the, your much. future. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank you. Jessamine and Michael Basco, man of the match here at Starfire Sports Stadium. Jubilant scenes, you can see the team. What an effort from them all the way to the final whistle. Kevin Swearin, this match had everything. Mark, it was beautiful. It was nonstop action. I mean, three, four, five minutes of face play at a time, continuity of game. The referee was phenomenal, calling the right moments. I mean, he didn't get, it was just beautiful. And what a finish by Utah to come into this environment. And uh, just a pleasure tonight, Mark. It was indeed. We hope you enjoyed it at home as well. For Jessamine McIntyre, Kevin Swearin, and the entire crew, I'm Mark Stabina saying thanks for joining us. Have a great night, and we'll see you next week.